Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Learning Engineering Solutions. In this video, you will learn how to do sizing of a control valve. A control valve is a variable orifice used to regulate flow of the process fluid in accordance with process requirements. It absorbs the proper amount of pressure drop to maintain system balance in all operating conditions. And it is used for the correct distribution and control of flowing liquid or gases, reduction of pressure as a variable orifice and as a correcting or modulating equipment. Control valve basically connects two parts. One is the control center and the second one is the field process. In the field process, when a sensor senses the values, it gives the input to the controller where the set value, say the temperature or the pressure, is judged by the controller and then controller gives the output signal to the valve through the transducer. And finally, this valve adjusts our process according to our set value so that we can achieve the required process parameters and safely run our process. There are mainly three parts of the control valve. First one is the actuator. Second is the body of the valve and third one is the trim. In the trim, mainly the wetted parts of the auto valves are covered. And the other detail components of each part of the auto valve can be seen here. There are some common definitions which required before moving to the sizing of the control valve. First one is the flow rate. The highest flow rate where the control valve will be fully opened will be called as the system limit, limit flow rate. Second flow rate is the minimum flow rate that which can be controllable by the auto valve. Third definition is about the turn down the ratio of the minimum flow rate to the normal flow rate is called turn down. Fourth definition is the range ability. It is the ratio of maximum stable flow rate to the minimum stable flow rate. Next definition is about the choke flow. Choke flow is that flow when there is no increase in the flow rate with the constant inlet pressure. And second, large, uh, second last definition is a vena contractor. Vena contractor basically that point where is the velocity is maximum and pressure is minimum. And the last definition is the cavitation and uh, it is, uh, it is uh, called the formation and the collapse of the vapor bubbles. Here are the main types of the control valves. The control valves are the defined in two ways motions one is the linear motion and the second one is a rotary motion in the linear motion further valves is divided into globe diaphragm and pinch valve and the globe valve is further divided into five categories which is angle three wave single seated double seated and a simple globe valve, while the rotary motion valves are divided into three main valves which are called ball, ball valve, butterfly valve and the plug valve. Now here comes the procedure of the control valve sizing. The sizing equations are divided into two categories, valve without fittings and second one valve with fittings. If there are fittings across the valve then an additional factor which is called the fittings factor is considered to account for the pressure losses in the fittings. The main procedures of 
of control valve sizing described here so the first step is we have to select the actuator type and the flow characteristics and second to calculate the required CV which is called the valve coefficient third one is to select the valve from the vendor's tables on the basis of our calculated CV and the fourth step is to include the FP factors that is the fittings factors and then recalculate the, the CV here are mainly three types of actuators first one is the electrical actuator which is uh, operated by the uh, external power source second one is the hydraulic actuator and third is the pneumatic actuator in the, the pneumatic actuator the external driving force is the uh, instrument air here the valve trim and the flow characteristics are the important to select the uh, valve opening uh, with respect to its flow mainly there are three types of valve lift which affects the flow inside the valve first one is the linear in linear trim are used where the pressure drop across the valve is constant for example in level control if the linear trim will be used second is the equal percentage the equal percentage is used where the pressure drop across the valve may vary as the flow goes from its minimum value to maximum value for example the equal percentage is used in pressure and flow control and the third is the quick opening and the quick opening valves are useful in bypass or recycle lines where a basic on off control of flow is required in the right side on the right side you can see a graph in x axis on x axis there is a valve lift and on y axis there is a flow percentage you can visualize that when the valve lift increases how flow behave itself in the control valve and when there is a doubt that which uh, flow characteristics uh, you need to be selected for the valve trim you can choose the equal percent here is the inside of the valve trims now for the control valve sizing you need a few parameters as a input data so that you can easily do sizing first one is the medium that you must know that uh, what service will be used inside the valve that what is passing through the valve if it is a special liquid then uh, give specific gravity at flowing temperature uh, also provide the critical pressure vapor pressure and viscosity second input parameter is the pressure that what is the maximum pressure that valve needs to be rated for and what are the upstream and downstream pressure for each of the maximum normal and minimum flow third one is the flow rates that you must know about the minimum normal and maximum values of the flow rates basically the maximum value of the flow rate uh, is used to select the valve size and the minimum to check the turn down requirement while the normal is to see that where the valve will control the flow rate and in the last one you need the temperature uh, at three points that is maximum normal and minimum flow conditions the control valve sizing uh, the main component in the control valve sizing is a valve coefficient which is called cv cv valve coefficient is a measure of the capacity of a valve it takes account of its size and the natural restriction to flow through the valve basically the cv of a valve is the quantity of water in us gallons at 60 degree fahrenheit 
height that will pass through the valve each minute with a 1 psi pressure drop across it. This is the formula to calculate the CV where Q is the flow rate, G is the specific gravity and delta V is the pressure drop. We need to calculate the FV factor as well for the control valve sizing. FV which is also called the fitting factor is a correction factor that accounts for pressure losses due to pipes fittings such as reducer, elbows, arteries. If no fittings attached to the valve then value of FV will be 1. If fittings are installed then FV, FV will be calculated, calculated as as below formula. Here you can see the other parameters and some constants as well which are described in this slide that how they can be calculated. D small d is a nominal valve size and the large d is the internal diameter of the piping on which your control valve will be installed. While the K1 is the resistance coefficient of upstream fittings and K2 is the resistance coefficient of the downstream fittings. Now uh, when you have calculated the CV uh, then you need to select a valve size from the vendor sheet and as the valve size will change so effect of FP factor will also change. So you need to recalculate the CV for this valve by using this formula. Here are the general rules of thumbs for sizing and the selection of the control valves. That in the first when you have uh, selected the actuator uh, and, uh, and, and you have uh, estimated and the flow characteristics, uh, then the preliminary, uh, the preliminary size can be determined by computing the valve stroke. And second, that the stroke is the ratio of calculated CV to the actual CV for a particular valve. Valve manufacturers will provide the actual CV for their various valve size and types. Uh, I have shared a typical uh, CV value against the, uh, the, uh, the line size in the next slide. So your selected valve must be operated in between 10 to 80 percent of the valve stroke. And generally the control bodies are one size less than the line size. But it is not always the same. The control valve electronic parts should be explosion proof based on hazardous area classification of plant. And also the noise level is important for the control valve sizing and it should not exceed above the 85 decibel. Here are some uh, recommended allowable pressure drops when we are going to size the control valve for the specific process of the circuit. For example, if you want to install a control valve on the discharge line of the pump, then you have to accommodate the 33% of the dynamic losses. And if there is a suction and discharge of the centrifugal compressor, then the allowable pressure drop must be 5% of the suction pressure or the 50% of the dynamic losses. And if this, there is a static pressure, mean liquid moves from one pressure vessel to another, then the allowable pressure drop must be the 10% of the downstream vessel pressure. And similarly, the same allowable pressure drop limits will be followed by the, the, uh, the, uh, the sizing of the control valve for the steam lines. Here is the uh, typical flow coefficients that is the CV value for some common valves that uh, if there is a single seat glow valve and your calculated CV is at 26, then the valve size will be the 1.5 inch. And similarly with the other valves, you can visualize that, uh, that, uh, that your cal calculated CV and the valve size in this table. 